So do you have any question from the previous class? From the previous lab? And did you all attempt the previous assignments, like not assignment, the previous work, the code I have uploaded? No? Yes? Anyone? Uh, actually, the uh, these four labs, uh, three, four, five, six, they are the uh, the next lab is continuation of the previous lab. So if you don't attempt the previous lab and you don't understand all the variables that we have declared there, then you won't be able to understand what is happening in the next lab. So you should be able to understand whatever we have done in the previous lab. And then when we are moving to the next lab, then you can easily pick up all those things. So please uh, do attempt all the labs, the previous labs before coming to the next one. So this will help you to understand, to have some idea from the previous, and then to uh, you can easily pick up those concepts, which I'm explaining in the new labs. So, um, Today is our lab number four. Previously, uh, we studied these things. Firstly, we generated the signal and the signal was having the varying amplitude and the varying frequency. And why was what was the purpose for varying the amplitude and varying varying frequency, so that we can generate a kind of um, semi-random signal. And although it was not random, because if you see that signal, it was something like mm, this, but it was repeating itself again and again. So when a signal is repeating itself again and again, then it is called periodic signal and its uh, uh, its features are its uh, amplitude or whatever uh, we can predict it, right? The signal which is predictable is not a random signal. So we know that this point will happen after a cycle here, when the cycle is complete or when one frequency is complete, one cycle is complete here then this point will come again and then it will happen again so we can predict it right so to when you can predict this one point this point or this point in that case it means that um, your signal is predictable right uh, so what we did uh, we only uh, showed two of its cycle we didn't show all of its cycle so by showing two of its cycles our goal was just to see the signal, to visualize the signal as a kind of random signal. So it looks like random, but it is not random, okay? Uh, like I would, the example of some random, sig random signal is when you are recording your voice from a mic. So the mic will generate some frequency of having different amplitude and different frequencies. Uh, this kind of signal. And you never know when they are repeating or they will never repeat because um, the signal is very random. It depends on the compression and decompression of air. And that, that compression and decompression of air is vibrating the diaphragm. And that diaphragm of the microphone is producing the electrical signals. So they are something like this. They are like very random in nature. They are not repeating itself again and again, OK? So uh, in our case, since we are generating the signal for sake of simplicity, we are producing a simple kind of signal, which is which looks like a semi-random signal. Then what we did the next, the next step was the step number two was the sampling process. As I told you, our signal, for example, this is any kind of signal. If we have this signal, then it contains different amplitude and different frequencies. So we are not concerned about the amplitude. Whatever the amplitude is, uh, we whatever the amplitude is, just ignore it. We don't have. Uh, we are not uh, concerned with this. But we are concerned with the frequency in the sampling process. Okay, the the frequency that is the highest. Uh, 
So why the highest? If you don't consider the highest frequency, it means that we will be losing those information. And when we are interpolating or when we are recovering that signal at the receiver side, then we will not recover it properly and we will lose the information. And losing the information means that whatever we have transmitted, it will not be received accordingly. So our signal will be corrupted. Right, so if the signal is corrupted, then there is no meaning of receiving it. Right, so in that case, uh, you have to care about the frequency, the maximum frequency component available here. And then not only the maximum frequency component, not only the maximum, but a couple of times higher than that. For example, at least twice of that, two times of the maximum frequency or more than that is better. But up to how much? We cannot go like uh, 50 times of the maximum frequency. 50 times of the maximum frequency means that you are considering almost each and every point here, right? And considering each and every point, then it is not sampling. It means that you are sending the same signal. And sending the same signal means that you are, resource, you are wasting the resources. So uh, we have limited resources and to send your trans transmission or information in those limited resources, you have to sample the signal efficiently, right? To sample your signal, you have to consider uh, like at least twice. So at least twice mean you can take it for example, five times or something like that of the maximum frequency available in your signal. And that is called the Nyquist criteria. The Nyquist has defined that how can you recover the signal back efficiently at the receiver side when you transmit it with a good sampling rate, right? So uh, with Nyquist criteria, you don't, don't lose the information, but you also reduce the resources. The, you also efficiently use the resources or you reduce the um, size of your signal that you are going to transmit, right? So for, for example, just an example, if you are transmitting 4 GB, maybe you are sending now 4 MB, right? So that was, that was the idea behind the sampling. And now, what we, let, let me do the quantization here. Here, on the same screen. What we are going to do that in today's, today's lab is related to the quantization. So what is the quantization? Quantization means that you already define the points that you are going to transmit, that, but those points can be anywhere. For example, this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. So sampling means you, you have defined your points at the x-axis. For example, this is your point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4. But you don't know how high it is the point, how high each point, how high each point is, what is the amplitude of each point. So you know this information, for example, this is my one, this is my two, this is my third sample, but you don't know what is the height of Y1, what is the Y2, what is the Y3. So to get those information, the information related to the Y axis are the amplitude information too, then you need to have the quantization of the same signal, right? So what is the quantization? Let's see the same signal. I think I should sketch another figure. So you have the signal here, which is some, I think our signal somehow looks like this. And then you sample the signal. For example, you al already obeyed the Nyquist criteria and you are sending, for example, in the previous lab, we transmitted every fourth sample of your signal. So the every fourth sample of the signal means like, like you reduce the bandwidth by four, right? If you are transmitting four GB, then you are now trans divided by four means that you are transmitting far lesser than that. So you are transmitting each four point, but um, you only have this information, this one, this one, like this. Now you also want to know that what is the amplitude of that? So firstly, you should know, for example, in our case, we will be do, we, sh we should know what is the maximum of our signal and what is the minimum of our signal. And this will de define our limits. 
So our signal is, all our signal is located from this point to this point, right? So this defines our limits now. Now we know that the limit is this much, then what is the other step? The other step is to define, to uh, further define where each point is located. So one technique is this one. For example, I divided into some levels, for example, these levels, right? And then one level is this one, one small level is this one, the other level is this one, and the fourth level is this one. So one, two, three, four. So I define levels is equal to four. So this is one of the very simplest way. This is not always happening, but one of the most simplest way to make you understand what a quantization is. Now you already defined the levels and now you can see that within this level, these samples are occurring, right? So any sample, for example, this sample, this sample, this sample, this sample, and this sample belongs to the level number one. This sample and this sample belongs to the level number two. This one and no one is belonging to the level number three. These four samples belonging to the level number five. Uh, sorry, the level number four. So each level has some uh, samples there uh, and they are defined. And now we have these, these level are called quantile intervals. So this is quantile interval, QI number one, QI number two, QI number three, and the QI number four. So when you define the levels, now you can recover the signal like this. For example, this is my level, right? So the level will just put the all the signal, for example, this signal, this signal, this signal here, this one here. So at the certain specific level at the middle, for example, they are putting all the level uh, signal at the middle. So when you are recovering this signal, so you will be recovering it like this. This should, these three should be in line, right? All the four signals should be in line. So you are recovering at like this, this, and then they are four in the line. So like this and this. So you recover signal something like this, although the actual is the white signal. Now here is also a trade-off. Either you have to define more levels and defining more levels. Let me let me first show you what will be the consequence if you are defining more levels. For example, we are now defining uh, uh, eight levels um, more than the more than what we have. So, for example, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So if you look at here, we have some levels, for example, uh, this level. It carries no information, right? It doesn't have anything. And then uh, what is the other level? For example, I have this one. It has nothing. So the benefit of this is you will have a very cleaner way, maybe like this one, you will recover some good signal. But what is the drawback of this one? The drawback is you are again defining more levels. Defining more levels mean that you are increasing the computational complexity and that computational complexity will have some cost, right? So uh, again, we have to do it very wisely. This quantization process also we have to do wisely. There are several techniques to do that. Uh, but today we are not doing that. We are going to perform just very simple. For example, I'll be defining four levels and then I will be assigning these points to those specific levels. Then we will be encoding it, then we will be modulating it and transmitting it. And then we will be doing the, the reverse process at the receiver, right? Now, this was all about the quantization. Um, do you have any questions so far in the quantization? Uh, no? Okay, so let me move forward to the other part, which is the encoding. So um, our signal can be looking, our signal might be like this. Sorry, it's just a simple sinusoidal signal. I'm not just sketching the um, 
uh, very complex signal just for sake of good visibility, right? So for example, this is the zero level, this is the minus five amplitude, and this is your plus five amplitude. So as you know, when you are doing the encoding process, or not even encoding process, when you are converting the numbers from uh, decimal to binary, it is hard to convert the number from negative from negative values into the binary, right? It's always hard. And it is not only hard for the humans, but it is also hard for the machines. Machines are difficult to deal with the negative signs. So people are converting the negative signs to positive, equivalent positive size, uh, signs, right? And please remember the encoding that we are going to do is the very simplest one encoding process. And then there are more encoding like the channel encoding and some other encoding that we are not covering in this one. Maybe in the LTE labs, we will cover those one. But this encoding is just to convert the signal from the analog to the digital. Now, if you see the your quantized signal, you already define your quantile interval, this one and this one as for example, your quantile interval here and this one and this one is the quantile here this this is here and all one two maybe three and four these are the quantile intervals but they are still analog they are not digital now so you have to provide some equivalent binary code to each and every quantile interval that you have defined not in quantile interval quantile point quantile interval is the whole interval right and quantile is this is the your quantized point right these are your quantized point now to define the binary number to each and every point, you have to convert it back to the binary. You have to convert it to the binary form. So uh, what is the best way? First of all, get rid of the negatives. So just get rid of the negative first. And I have done a very simple process, a very simple process to the current lab and what I have done, I have subtracted this minimum, the minimum available amplitude from all the points that we have. So for example, we have a point here, 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 and here, and I'm simply subtracting the minimum point from there. So if I have a point here, so for example, this is minus five, minus five, and what is the minimum point? It is also minus five, right? So minus five minus and two minus five. This is equal to minus five plus five is equal to zero. And then for example, I have another point which is locating at minus three. So minus three minus and two minimum point is minus five. So minus three plus five is equal to two. And for example, I have the highest point which is available here. Uh, so um, uh, if I subtract the five minus and two uh, minus five, this is equal to five plus five is equal to 10. So the signal, which was looking like this, it will shift up like this, for example, like this, sorry, the face should be same. So this point should come like this and this should go like that. Okay, so this point is coming to the zero level. This point, which was here, it is going to the highest level. This is going to this highest level, and this point is raising up to this level, right? So now all the points inside this blue one, for example, are make me let me make it green to be identified from the correct point to identify it from the correct one. So this green one, um, the green line is now our. Uh, and positive signal. And once we have the positive signal, we can very easily convert it to the binary form. You know it, right? Like I think everyone of know what is the binary equivalent code for each number. For example, for zero, we have zero, 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 zero. For one, we have zero, 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 one. For two, we have zero, zero, one, zero. And this way, for 10, we have one, zero, one, zero, something like that. So you have to convert, you have to provide the equivalent binary form for the each and every digit that is contained in the quantized interval. So from here, 
all the signal, sorry, in this one, everyone will contain some uh, quanta some digital form now. So for example, after the encoding, the, if it is looking at the two, for example, the value is two, then it will be zero, zero, one, zero. If it is three, then it will be zero, zero, one, one. Again, three, zero, zero, one, one, two, zero, zero, one, zero. And, oh, but this is raised up. So sorry, not, not this figure, maybe this one, this one. So we will have a points like that. And then we will provide the equivalent binary farm. And that equivalent binary farm is our encoding. So is it clear? If you have any question, you can ask. And then, uh, yeah, during the code, what I have done, for example, I have this signal. And then I define the four quantile intervals like this. And then I have these points, for example, point this one, this one, this one. So what I'm doing, firstly, I have to start from this point, right? So any point, and then uh, since, since I told you that, yeah, the, uh, no, currently I'm talking about the quantization, so sorry. So firstly, I have to say, for example, this is my quantile interval. So I am first computing the distance between these two. It will give me some quantile interval estimation. And within there, I can say that, okay, this quantile interval is locating here, this is locating also here, and this is locating here. So I should give, I should align all those points in this, this interval, quantile one, then quantile two. If there is any point here, then I, I should put it here. Then in quantile three, I should put it here, and then here, for example, here. Okay, so, now let's go to the MATLAB and let me change the screen now. So before I change the screen, uh, do you have any question there? Okay, so I'll switch to my other computer. So can you all see the my screen? Okay. Yes. So previously, uh, we had generated the signal and our uh, fundamental frequency was one kilohertz, but we were also changing the frequency term and also its amplitude term. And then we defined the system frequency, which was like 20 times, which means that we considered each and every point. And this was our original signal, right? And then sampling rate was the consecutive difference between the two oh, sampling, uh, uh, reciprocal of the sampling frequency. So if you first derive the sampling rate, Sampling rate, it's kind of uh, frequency and time period. Time period is the reciprocal of frequency. So the consecutive difference between the two sampling point is your, the sampling rate. And then we defined the range for visualizing our signal. And then we generated our signal like that, that we already explained in the previous slide. And then we put the sample. And what was the sample? We took the sampling frequency, which was 20 times of the maximum harmonic frequency are the maximum frequency component available here. And then we divided it by the sampling and we had defined the sampling, which was five. So five times of the maximum frequency available. And if you see how much is this value? So this is equal to four. So you are taking every port, every fourth point of your signal, of your transmitted signal. No, every fourth point of the signal you want to transmit. So you are taking the message signal and then you are taking every fourth point of that message signal. And here you plotted the uh, original signal and also the uh, frequency. So uh, the sampled frequency. So we, we can 
see it like this if I plot it. And here you can see that your original signal is the blue one. And what you transmitted was this one. So you can have one, two, three, four. You are not transmitting the first four points. And then you are transmitting this one. Then you are transmitting this one. And then this one, this one, this one. Right? So you are skipping three information. And then you are, tra tra you are considering the fourth information. Again, skipping three information. And then considering the fourth information. And this, this is how you did the sampling. Now we are doing the um, quantization. So sorry, Q, U is smart, quantization. So as I told you, first of all, uh, we should have the number of levels. So I will say that I have number of um, L -E -V -E -L -S is equal to four. So I'm saying that I'm dividing the maximum and minimum by four number of levels. And um, to quantile the signal, then the, to make the quantile interval, first of all, we need I need the limits, right? So, so quantile is equal to uh, maximum uh, maximum of this signal minus minimum of that signal and then i should make it the numerator and then divided by this denominator right so uh I defined the four quantile interval and our signal that I showed you, uh, I think I, I should have a figure. Yeah. So uh, what I'm doing here, I have the maximum sample, which is the this one, right? This is the maximum. And what is my minimum? This is my minimum. So if I, for example, this is five plus five and this is minus five, right? So plus five minus minus five, that will be equal to 10, right? So my total interval, my total limit is 10. And then what are the number of levels? The number of levels are four. So it will give me one, two, three, and four levels, right? So uh, then uh, let me declare another variable, which is code. And I'm going to start from the lowest one. I want to start from this one and then quantile by quantile, I want to reach the top. So what is the uh, uh, way for doing it? I can say that the minimum of the M sample and then maximum of M sample. So can anyone tell me what should be here in the middle? I want to start from here and then for each interval, I should make a jump. Then this one, then this one, and then this one. So this is what we defined, right? We defined here. So it will start from here, from the minimum sample. It will make this offset and then it will reach to the next available, then the next available, then the next available, depend until it reached to this one. And then we have, let's say I'm declaring the uh, mic maximum quantile interval uh, variables and I will call it, I will declare it as zeros and then size of equal to the same thing. So this will contain the zeros and how much zeros? This much zeros. And what is this? This is your sampling sampling frequency. So the length of the MQ, the quantile interval should be equal to the letter because we we have to get acquired this information, right? The information for it, this is one sample, two sample, three sample, how much samples do we have? And then for each sample, you need the quantile interval, right? So the we need quantile interval for each sample. So the size should be similar. And let's declare a for loop 
the for loop, you have to end it. So I always do like this. First I for start the for and then I end it and then I start the condition in the body so that I don't forget the end. And it's very important in the MATLAB. So you have to also be very careful. Sometimes if you don't put the end, it will give you error. So for, let's say my variable k, k is started from one and it is goes up to l e n g t h length of this code. So what is the code? The code is almost four, I think, because it is starting from the five. So it is starting from this value, this value by that quantile offset and then goes there, 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 there and there. So in total, we will have one, two, and then this is the zero level and one, two. So in total, we will have four quantile levels. And once we have this for loop here, then we can say that, let's say we will first get the values that are there, the um, sampling values that are coming inside the quantile interval. So for example, I'm starting from the first quantile interval and any sampling value that is coming in the first quantile interval, it should be allocated some, it should be considered as the quantile values one. And then all these values should be considered quantile number level two and quantile, quantile level three and quantile level four, right? So um, for this, what should I do? Let's say this is my code of code and since I'm starting from the value k, this is my code of k. So initially my code value will be containing the lowest starting from the minimum sample, right? And I am saying that uh, my value should be a little greater than this one and a little less than this one. So I will make some offset between the code k. L let me do it first and then I'll explain you. Minus, I want to further narrow down this thing. So I have this quantile quantile divided by two, okay? So this is, for example, one of my condition, right? This is one of my condition. And I'm saying that this value, yeah, I will just explain it if it is not easy for you to digest, right? So it must be a bit difficult for you to understand at this point. And I'll take the same thing, I will put it here and I should say that it should be lower than that and it should be plus value. And what is all these values now? Okay, let me not, this is my debug, right? So let me run it only first. Uh, sorry, I think, uh, it run everything. So, and I think I should go for only one more step and then one more step. So what is this thing doing? Firstly, starting from the code number K. So what is the code number K? Code number K is minus four at four, this one. So this is my, sorry, this is my lowest value. The lowest value, not this one. So delete the current data type. So what is the first value? The first value is minus four, eight, one, eight, this one and this one. These are the two values. Minus quantile divided by two. So let me see what was our quantile. So quantile was this one and divided by two. So this was how we defined the number of levels, the maximum and minimum divided by the number of levels and then divided by two will give us further small values. So I'm saying that this is my core, right? So a little lower than this value, like this, right? So if I take this whole value, it will show me minus six points something. Mm -hmm. So this is my current value. And I'm saying that up to this value, for example, are even more than this minus six points something up to this one, for example. And also if I say that, what is this value now? Sorry, uh, it is minus three. 
Now, again, the same code, but with adding that value. So it will be something like R more than this, like this one. So within this range, from here to something here, if any value is there, so if M sample is greater, so the, this was the first value. If this sample is greater than this one, and then this sample is lower than this one, then make it one, make it binary value. So what is this one? Because the, these are the logical operation and then this thing is happening. So it will give us only binary number. And all those values will be equal to one. So one mean true. So all the true values should be taken and the rest of the value should be discarded. And then how much levels I have? I have four levels. So this this will go to the next code for when the k iterates, k will become two and the code of two will be equal to the next available. So this code of two, sorry, not two k, code of two will be equal to this one. So it will be taking into account maybe this value or this one, maybe this one. Yeah, 2.42. So then it will be taking considering this value and again it will derive the limits and if this value contain here then just make this condition true and then if again here and then here so i think there is no nothing uh, uh, trivial um, you will understand this thing just see um, uh, do some practice on it and see all the variable values so you will easily understand these things and uh, yeah, once I have these values, like for example, the values will a variable which will only takes the value which is true, right? So it will only takes the value which are true. So only those will be highlighted. For example, here the value was true. So it will be equal to one and all the other values will be zeros. So this is only the case for the fourth one. If we iterate it more, then there will be more value there. So if I see it, sorry. I can see more ones there. And then for more, you have to iterate it more. And finally, when you see the values, you will see. So for each iteration, when you are done with this one, for example, if I remove the debug and I run it, for values, you will have the one highlighted, which will contain the true value for particular quantile interval. So for this one, for this one, for this one. And when I derive that quantile interval, then I have to also take it into this one. For example, I have used this one, right? So I should take this one uh, MQO and the MQO should take all the variables which are true, which is this one. And from where should it take? It should take it from the core. So this is my core and the code, which code? So any code value, K. So for example, the code K should contains only the true value and put it in the MQO, which is this one. And since the value contains some fraction values, so I also want to get rid of the fraction values because I have to make the binary form or the encoding process. So fraction again makes some trouble for me. So I want to get rid of that. So I will round it too. So it will round the values and it will keep the values in this MQ variable, right? And just for sake of simplicity, I will clear this uh, values, this one. I will delete it. I don't need it anymore because I used it and I don't want to save it here. I want to remove the mess from here and I will simply plot it. So I already have the quantile intervals defined now. So the time axis, what is the T? T already I have de defined above. And then MQ, which is this one. So, sorry, comma MQ. And I want to show it like um, maybe red. And I will, I want to start it with O for example, or with star yeah i want to show it with star and then yeah grade on again those are the usual things right x label is the 
time and the y label is the Um, what is the Y label? So the Y label is always the amplitude of the signal. That is it. I think uh, it's enough to show. Now, can you see it? So uh, this quantile interval was defined, for example, so any uh, for these, the, this one and this one limit. So anything here, for example, for this sample, this quantile was defined for this one, this one and this and this, even though this was here, but it defined the quantile interval here and here. So when you are recovering the signal, it will be considering it like this, and then this one, and then th th that will give us some error because our quantile interval is lesser. So we have to increase at the quantile interval. So for you, it's the task, just keep changing the quantile interval and see the impact on the signal, okay? So let's now encode this signal. And I think I should also give it a different figure. So this is figure number two. So these are my now quantile intervals, right? So for this sample, these quantile intervals are defined. Now let us see what is do, uh, happening at the encoding process. So encoding is very simple as I told you. Uh, first of all, we have to raise up the minimum. Uh, we have to we have to just omit any negative values if they are there. So there are a lot of values there. If I see, for example, the MQ, this is my variable for the quantization, right? So I have minus five, minus two, and I want to get rid of that. So to do that, I will just declare an other variable. For example, I'm calling it MQ1. MQ1, and then I'm saying that the any value of the MQ subtract the minimum amplitude of the same thing. So can you see it? It is only now the positive values. There is no negative values. So the value have been raised up and now I can simply apply the built-in function. So I will say that my bits is equal to, this is the built-in function in the MATLAB, DE to PI, I think, yeah. Decimal to binary. So the decimal numbers are converted into the binary using this function. And what you want to convert, so it is MQ1, which is this one. And MQ1 is basically located where? It is located here. It is located here, every fourth sample, I think. Yeah, here. Right? So, uh, but yeah, I should firstly write this one. But I should not go to the T because I have not, uh, I should just go to the MQ, which is this one. And then uh, I should define that what should be the amount of bits you are representing. So I can represent it in eight bits too. So four is enough for me. And also what should be the most significant bit? So the most significant bit, you can also make it like right, right most is the most significant bit, but mostly we have the left bit as most significant bit. So we can say that the left should be our MSP. If you make it the right, then it will just flip it and uh, gives you the other other option, the alternative option. And then from here, you can simply uh, uh, plot it. But before plotting, let's see how it looks like. See, my bits are plotting like this, showing like this. For example, my what was my first value? I want to see my first value. Uh, it was. Uh, 
five, right? So for the five, they have generated the equivalent code, which is zero one zero one, right? And then the other code for the other number for the other, and finally you have you will have the uh, for the others. But I want to show it in a vector form because now it it is in a matrix form, right? Something lot of rows divided by multiplied by the four number of columns. To do that, I just need to again declare define this variable is equal to this is just a binary function we just write it like that and now it will just linearly align all those values in the vector form now you can see it in the vector form and if you want to see it in the row form the not the column vector if you want to see it in the row vector just put the transpose there and if you want to see it it is now like this Right, so every four numbers are belonging to one of the quantile interval value, right? So the four, because our uh, binary is uh, expressed in four bits. And what is your leftmost is your uh, significant bit, which means, for example, uh, if I would have shown you the pre from the previous one, this one. So this is my most significant bit. So if you write it, the right is the most significant bit, then it will write it the same value. I'm only talking about this one. This would be 1010. Then this would be the most significant bit. But in this case, it is the most significant bit, which is just the conventional uh, case that we use, right? And if you want to just plot this one too, so let me call it the figure number three, maybe, yeah. And then and I just want to stem the bits and I want to stem it into magenta color. And just also, I want to express it in the form of star, steric and then hold on and legend legend mean that you want to label it too so i will call it the bits sequence and the transmitter that is it and let me run it so this is how it looks like for this one, you have this one sequence generator. For this one, you have this sequence generator. So one represent binary one and zero represent the binary zero. So if you look at this one clearly, this, this represents your zeros and this represents your four. And four, uh, four digits here, they represent one quantile interval. For example, zero, one, one, zero then zero 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 this is the other one so the first one zero one one zero this is one of the quantile decimal point right so this is it for today's lab uh, but please you have to do some more practice to understand all these things clearly uh, i will upload the same code to your um, i class and you need to do some practice on it. Please understand all the code so that I don't have to repeat these things again. And you should understand when I'm doing the next lab because all these labs are in continuation. So if I'm doing the lab number five and next week, it will be, I'll be covering everything related to maybe the lab number three, two and one. So I need these codes. So because this is the end-to-end -end communication system. And if you see the slides, mm, which is, I, I'm sorry, I didn't even open it. I uh, have to change that. Yeah. So firstly, we cover the uh, source uh, source signal, which was the message signal that we generated in the first lab, and then we sampled it. 
in today's lab, we cover the quantization and also the encoding process. And the next lab, we will be using all these things. So you have to understand these things first. And then we will be doing the modulation, then AWGN channel and receiver filter. And the sixth lab, we will be doing the reverse process of this one. So all these things are belonging to the transmitter and all these things are belonging to the receiver. So the receiver contains the receiver filter, demodulation, decoding and signal reconstruction. And this AWGN channel, this belongs to the uh, in between the transmitter and the receiver. So this is the wireless medium, right? So what we did today, we covered the quantization and this is the how the quantile interval is defined. And then you can uh, see also how this plot, uh, how we plot this, I already explained you. And then uh, how was this uh, generated, why did we raise up, what was the reason, and to make it positive, and then also from 0 to 10, we had those values, and then we converted from the decimal into binary form, and this was the equivalent uh, plot for that. So do you have any question now from this, or from previous labs? So if you don't have a question, this is all for today. And then I'll see you in the next lab. So is there anyone who skipped the attendance and came now? Anyone? For example, 1496. Hey, one six five six, one six five six. One six five six, okay. Anyone else? So uh, it seems like only this guy is absent, 1496, right? Okay, I'll save it. And yeah, this is all for today. So I'll see you in next lab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.